Hello artists, welcome to another video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Irit. I'm an intuitive artist based in Austria and Europe and on my channel I share my artsy adventures. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. If you didn't, then give it a thumbs down so I know what you like to see. And of course, I invite you to subscribe. I would love to have you here. In today's video, I'm sharing with you my process. I know so many of you really enjoy these kinds of videos the most. And I totally understand because I love watching other artists make art. It is fun. And honestly, some days it's better than anything on Netflix. <laughs> so I hope you will enjoy the process. I will try to talk about the supplies I use as I'm using it, some of my process, my inspiration, uh, what I have planned for the coming months. And I hope you'll enjoy it. So I'm starting with a paper. I always get questions on this paper. This is an unnamed paper from Hannemühle, which is a German brand. I'm in Austria. They are very widely available for me and as local as it gets. As far as I know, I'm not really familiar with uh, Austrian paper manufacturers. And Hannemühle is a great choice uh, if you're in Germany, if you're in Austria, and I'm guessing also the rest of Europe. I know for you peeps in Northern America and other places in the world, it's not always easy to find. Uh, so, you know, I encourage you to try different papers until you find something that you love. And the great thing about this particular paper, as I said, it is unnamed. It's just written on the cover Aquarell, which is watercolor in German. And it is very, very, very affordable. And finding this paper has really helped me paint more. And painting more, painting daily, feeling less precious about my supplies has been a major factor in discovering my own voice and style as an artist. And so I highly, highly encourage you, especially if you're on a budget and as you're painting, you're, you, you know, you're, you're seeing those dollar marks go up. I 100% understand and can relate. I've always been on a budget. And, and so finding supplies that you can use freely and also getting into that mindset of you're not wasting your supplies as long as you're using them, even if you're making really, really ugly art you're not wasting them, uh, I think is really crucial in getting to that point where you feel like you can paint daily and use up and use your supplies. So that's the paper. I start my process usually with wax pastels. These are Neocolor ones and they are made by Carandash, which is a Swiss brand. They are one of my ride or die supplies. I love them. As you can see, they resist watercolor because they are wax. I use the Neocolor ones, which are water resistant. And there are also Neocolor two, which I sometimes use because they have a wider color range. And I find that if you use them like I used here at the beginning and you don't really agitate them with your brush, they will also, they, they are still wax pastels and so they do resist watercolors um, if you, you know, you don't bug them too much. And so some colors only exist in Neocolor 2 and you know I'm all about color and, and that's why I use both. But formula wise, I prefer for my purposes for the look that I like, which is those sketchy lines that really resist watercolor and stay uh, for the entire process and are visible uh, in the end point. So uh, in the finished uh, work, um, that's why I like the Neo Color ones. And I use them on almost every painting these days. I'm going to say every painting that I paint with watercolors. Now, actually, what I'm using here is gouache. And this is my gouache palette. And I'm not sure when this video will go up, but I'm pretty sure that I already put up my gouache palette video. So if you want to know which brands are in my gouache palette, which palette I'm using, I will link to that video and you can check that out. I'm also using a flat brush, which I personally find works much, much better with 
gouache paints. In watercolors, I have my go-to brushes. They tend to be more of like sword brushes, dagger brushes with longer um, bristles that are made from synthetic materials that are not very absorbent. I have found that those kind of bristles work for me. They usually tend to be like bright orange in color. I'm telling you all these details because I always get questions on my materials and I want to give you all the information and also explain to you why I use the supplies that I use. It's usually because I have tried so many things and found these to work best with my personal style and the way that I like to use my supplies. Um, but for gouache, I have been incorporating more and more gouache in my process and I absolutely love it. Uh, I love the opacity of it and I love um, just just the way it looks uh, in general. Yes, I would say as opposed to watercolors, that opacity and I just feel it works a little bit better in this kind of creamy consistency that you see on the screen than watercolors do. I, I find the colors uh, stay a little bit more vibrant. It just works a little bit better. It's not the perfect medium for me. And in most painting, I will bring out also my watercolor palette. I'll probably get to why uh, in this video. Um, but uh, especially for these stages and for a more opaque application of bright, maybe sometimes a little bit pastel -y colors, I do find it easier to work with gouache than with watercolors. And I also like using a flat brush, which I hardly ever use in watercolors. I don't enjoy it with watercolors. Somehow in gouache, it works better. It holds less water and more um, of that gouache, a little bit of water mixture. So that's just um, what works for me. But I think from what I've seen, I think a lot of gouache artists prefer flat brushes. I just feel it works a little bit better with this medium and that kind of heavier application. And in general, the use of less water than when, at least when I paint, but also a lot of other people that I've seen use with watercolors. And also, especially in the early stages of painting with watercolors. Um, if you're, you know, familiar with the process of painting with watercolors and a lot of um, many, many artists that I have seen over the years, you know, there, there's usually a process and they they will usually talk about the consistency of the paint. And usually, everything is usually, there's always to every rule, there are artists that are breaking that rule very, very successfully. But I'm talking about what I mostly see. When you paint with watercolors, you start with a more fluid application. There's more water, there's less pigment. And as your painting progresses, as your process progresses, um, and you get more to those advanced stages and final stages of the painting process, um, many artists will then use more and more pigment, less and less water. I feel with gouache, you can already kind of start with a little bit heavier application, a little bit richer mixtures. And that just works for me because I love, as you can see, I love very, very loose, almost abstract paint, like painting and art style. I love to paint that kind of art and I appreciate this kind of art from other artists as well. Okay, this is the fourth time I'm recording this section of the narration. I really hope it's going to work now. <laughs> what I want to say is that a lot of uh, watercolor artists that paint in a loose and very fluid way use techniques that didn't work for me. I really tried, I used the same techniques, I used the same supplies, it didn't work for me. I would make a mess, I would use a heavy hand, I tend to have a heavy hand and that's why I prefer actually working in less layers because with my hand, I'm gonna call it, <laughs> I need less layers to create uh, something that is loose and light and the way that I like it. And so I had to unlearn a lot of the uh, strategies and techniques that many other artists use. And 
I want to tell you that while you 100%, 100% should learn from other artists, and I still do, um, this is part of my journey and growth as an artist, it is fantastic to learn from other artists, and sometimes it will really jump, like give you kind of a, a jump or hasten or f- fasten, not fasten, like <laughs> bring you to where you want to be as an artist faster. Uh, because they've already had the experience, you can learn from their experience. But it is as important to unlearn some of the things that don't work personally for you. And you have to kind of figure this out for yourself, not feel bad or untalented or lazy because something is not working for you. But maybe try to figure out if you can find a better way. Um, And so that is a really crucial part of the process if you want to paint in uh, an authentic way that is you and have your own voice and make art that looks like you and feels like you and doesn't look like other artists' art. I will say one word about my watercolor palette. One word. I've already said it four times. The reason I add watercolors to my gouache paintings or mixed media gouache paintings is because I have in my watercolor palette darker colors that are not completely opaque like gouache. Not all gouache is opaque, but uh, they are, are more transparent, but they also granulate and separate. And I don't have that in my gouache palette. And so I encourage you to bring supplies that do what you want them to do and not Um, insist on working with one medium. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you feel inspired to make some art. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye.